Chapter 8 Part 2 End of page 8 to 16 Turn Coordinator The gimbal in the turn coordinator is canted, therefore, its euro can sense both rate of roll and rate of turn. Since turn coordinators are more prevalent in training aircraft, this discussion concentrates on that instrument. When rolling into or out of a turn, the miniature aircraft banks in the direction the aircraft is rolled. A rapid roll rate causes the miniature aircraft to bank more steeply than a slow roll rate. The turn coordinator can be used to establish and maintain a standard rate turn by aligning the wing of the miniature aircraft with the turn index. Figure 8, 22 Shows a picture of a turn coordinator. There are two marks on each side, left and right, of the face of the instrument. The first mark is used to reference a wing's level zero rate of turn. The second mark on the left and right side of the instrument serve to indicate a standard rate of turn. A standard rate turn is defined as a turn rate of 3 degrees per second. The turn coordinator indicates only the rate and direction of turn, it does not display a specific angle of bank. End of page 8 to 17. Inclinometer. The inclinometer is used to depict aircraft yaw, which is the side-to-side -side movement of the aircraft's nose. During coordinated, straight-hand level flight, the force of gravity causes the ball to rest in the lowest part of the tube, centered between the reference lines. Coordinated flight is maintained by keeping the ball centered. If the ball is not centered, it can be centered by using the rudder. To center the ball, apply rudder pressure on the side to which the ball is deflected. Use the simple rule, step on the ball, to remember which rudder pedal to press. If aileron and rudder are coordinated during a turn, the ball remains centered in the tube. If aerodynamic forces are unbalanced, the ball moves away from the center of the tube. As shown in figure 8, 22. In a slip, the rate of turn is too slow for the angle of bank, and the ball moves to the inside of the turn. In a skid, the rate of turn is too great for the angle of bank, and the ball moves to the outside of the turn. To correct for these conditions, and improve the quality of the turn, remember to step on the ball. Varying the angle of bank can also help restore coordinated flight from a slip or skid. To correct for a slip, decrease bank and or increase the rate of turn. To correct for a skid, increase the bank and or decrease the rate of turn. Yaw String One additional tool that can be added to the aircraft is a yaw string. A yaw string is simply a string or piece of yarn attached to the center of the windscreen. When in coordinated flight, the string trails straight back over the top of the windscreen. When the aircraft is either slipping or skidding, the yaw string moves to the right or left depending on the direction of slip or skid. Instrument Check During pre-flight, ensure that the inclinometer is full of fluid and has no air bubbles. The ball should also be resting at its lowest point. When taxiing, the turn coordinator should indicate a turn in the correct direction while the ball moves opposite the direction of the turn. Attitude Indicator The attitude indicator, with its miniature aircraft and horizon bar, displays a picture of the attitude of the aircraft. The relationship of the miniature aircraft to the horizon bar is the same as the relationship of the real aircraft to the actual horizon. The instrument gives an instantaneous indication of even the smallest changes in attitude. The euro in the attitude indicator is mounted in a horizontal plane and depends upon rigidity in space for its operation. The horizon bar represents the true horizon. This bar is fixed to the euro and remains in a horizontal plane as the aircraft is pitched or banked about its lateral or longitudinal axis, indicating the attitude of the aircraft relative to the true horizon. Figure 8, 23. The euro spins in the horizontal plane and resists deflection of the rotational path. Since the euro relies on rigidity in space, the aircraft actually rotates around the spinning euro. End of page 8 to 18. An adjustment knob is provided with which the pilot may move the miniature aircraft up or down to align the miniature aircraft with the horizon bar to suit the pilot's line of vision. Normally, the miniature aircraft is adjusted so that the wings overlap the horizon bar when the aircraft is in straight-hand level cruising flight. The pitch and bank limits depend upon the make and model of the instrument. 
Limits in the banking plane are usually from 100 degrees to 110 degrees, and the pitch limits are usually from 60 degrees to 70 degrees. If either limit is exceeded, the instrument will tumble or spill and will give incorrect indications until realigned. A number of modern attitude indicators do not tumble. Every pilot should be able to interpret the banking scale illustrated in Figure 8, 24. Most banking scale indicators on the top of the instrument move in the same direction from that in which the aircraft is actually banked. Some other models move in the opposite direction from that in which the aircraft is actually banked. This may confuse the pilot if the indicator is used to determine the direction of bank. This scale should be used only to control the degree of desired bank. The relationship of the miniature aircraft to the horizon bar should be used for an indication of the direction of bank. The attitude indicator is reliable and the most realistic flight instrument on the instrument panel. Its indications are very close approximations of the actual attitude of the aircraft. Heading Indicator The heading indicator is fundamentally a mechanical instrument designed to facilitate the use of the magnetic compass. Errors in the magnetic compass are numerous, making straight flight and precision turns to headings difficult to accomplish, particularly in turbulent air. End of page 8 to 19. A heading indicator, however, is not affected by the forces that make the magnetic compass difficult to interpret. Figure 8, 25. The operation of the heading indicator depends upon the principle of rigidity in space. The rotor turns in a vertical plane and fixed to the rotor is a compass card. Since the rotor remains rigid in space, the points on the card hold the same position in space relative to the vertical plane of the euro. The aircraft actually rotates around the rotating euro, not the other way around. As the instrument case and the aircraft revolve around the vertical axis of the euro, the card provides clear and accurate heading information. Because of precession caused by friction, the heading indicator creeps or drifts from its set position. Among other factors, the amount of drift depends largely upon the condition of the instrument. If the bearings are worn, dirty, or improperly lubricated, the drift may be excessive. Another error in the heading indicator is caused by the fact that the euro is oriented in space, and the Earth rotates in space at a rate of 15 degrees in one hour. Thus, discounting precession caused by friction, the heading indicator may indicate as much as 15 degrees error per every hour of operation. Some heading indicators referred to as Horizontal Situation Indicators HSI, receive a magnetic north reference from a magnetic slaving transmitter and generally need no adjustment. The magnetic slaving transmitter is called a magnetometer. Attitude and Heading Reference System AHRS. Electronic flight displays have replaced free-spinning gyros with solid-state laser systems that are capable of flight at any attitude without tumbling. This capability is the result of the development of the Attitude and Heading Reference System AHRS. The AHRS sends attitude information to the PFD in order to generate the pitch and bank information of the attitude indicator. The heading information is derived from a magnetometer that senses the Earth's lines of magnetic flux. This information is then processed and sent out to the PFD to generate the heading display. Figure 8, 26. The Flux Gate Compass System. As mentioned earlier, the lines of flux in the Earth's magnetic field have two basic characteristics, a magnet aligns with them, and an electrical current is induced, or generated, in any wire crossed by them. The flux gate compass that drives slaves' gyros uses the characteristic of current induction. The flux valve is a small, segmented ring, like the one in Figure 8, 27, made of soft iron that readily accepts lines of magnetic flux. An electrical coil is wound around each of the three legs to accept the current induced in this ring by the Earth's magnetic field. A coil wound around the iron spacer in the center of the frame has 400 Hz alternating current AC, flowing through it. During the times when this current reaches its peak, twice during each cycle, there is so much magnetism produced by this coil that the frame cannot accept the lines of flux from the Earth's field. End of page 8 to 20. As the current reverses between the peaks, it demagnetizes the frame so it can accept the flux from the Earth's field. 
As this flux cuts across the windings in the three coils, it causes current to flow in them. These three coils are connected in such a way that the current flowing in them changes as the heading of the aircraft changes. Figure 8, 28 The three coils are connected to three similar but smaller coils in a synchro inside the instrument case. The synchro rotates the dial of a radiomagnetic indicator, RMI, or a HSI. Remote Indicating Compass Remote indicating compasses were developed to compensate for the errors and limitations of the older type of heading indicators. The two panel-mounted components of a typical system are the pictorial navigation indicator and the slaving control and compensator unit. Figure 8, 29 The pictorial navigation indicator is commonly referred to as an HSI. The slaving control and compensator unit has a push button that provides a means of selecting either the slaved euro or free euro mode. This unit also has a slaving meter and two manual heading drive buttons. The slaving meter indicates the difference between the displayed heading and the magnetic heading. A right deflection indicates a clockwise error of the compass card, a left deflection indicates a counterclockwise error. Whenever the aircraft is in a turn and the card rotates, the slaving meter shows a full deflection to one side or the other. When the system is in free euro mode, the compass card may be adjusted by depressing the appropriate heading drive button. A separate unit, the magnetic slaving transmitter, is mounted remotely, usually in a wingtip to eliminate the possibility of magnetic interference. It contains the flux valve, which is the direction-sensing device of the system. A concentration of lines of magnetic force, after being amplified, becomes a signal relayed to the heading indicator unit, which is also remotely mounted. End of page 8 to 21. This signal operates a torque motor in the heading indicator unit that processes the euro unit until it is aligned with the transmitter signal. The magnetic slaving transmitter is connected electrically to the HSI. There are a number of designs of the remote indicating compass, therefore, only the basic features of the system are covered here. Instrument pilots must become familiar with the characteristics of the equipment in their aircraft. As instrument panels become more crowded and the pilot's available scan time is reduced by a heavier flight deck workload, instrument manufacturers have worked toward combining instruments. One good example of this is the RMI in Figure 8, 30. The compass card is driven by signals from the flux valve, and the two pointers are driven by an automatic direction finder, ADF, and a very high frequency, VHF, Omnidirectional Radio Range VOR. Heading indicators that do not have this automatic north-seeking capability are called free gyros and require periodic adjustment. It is important to check the indications frequently, approximately every 15 minutes, and reset the heading indicator to align it with the magnetic compass when required. Adjust the heading indicator to the magnetic compass heading when the aircraft is straight and level at a constant speed to avoid compass errors. The bank and pitch limits of the heading indicator vary with the particular design and make of instrument. On some heading indicators found in light aircraft, the limits are approximately 55 degrees of pitch and 55 degrees of bank. When either of these attitude limits is exceeded, the instrument tumbles or spills and no longer gives the correct indication until reset. After spilling, it may be reset with the caging knob. Many of the modern instruments used are designed in such a manner so that they do not tumble. An additional precession error may occur due to a gyro not spinning fast enough to maintain its alignment. When the vacuum system stops producing adequate suction to maintain the gyro speed, the heading indicator and the attitude indicator gyros begin to slow down. As they slow, they become more susceptible to deflection from the plane of rotation. Some aircraft have warning lights to indicate that a low vacuum situation has occurred. Other aircraft may have only a vacuum gauge that indicates the suction. Instrument check. As the euro spools up, make sure there are no abnormal sounds. While taxiing, the instrument should indicate turns in the correct direction, and precession should be normal. At idle power settings, the gyroscopic instruments using the vacuum system might not be up to operating speeds and precession might occur more rapidly than during flight. Angle of attack indicators. 
The purpose of an AOA indicator is to give the pilot better situational awareness pertaining to the aerodynamic health of the airfoil. This can also be referred to as stall margin awareness. More simply explained, it is the margin that exists between the current AOA that the airfoil is operating at, and the AOA at which the airfoil will stall, critical AOA. Speed by itself is not a reliable parameter to avoid a stall. An airplane can stall at any speed. Angle of attack is a better parameter to use to avoid a stall. For a given configuration, the airplane always stalls at the same AOA, referred to as the critical AOA. This critical AOA does not change with 1. Weight 2. Bank angle 3. Temperature 4. Density altitude 5. Center of gravity An AOA indicator can have several benefits when installed in general aviation aircraft, not the least of which is increased situational awareness. Without an AOA indicator, the AOA is invisible to pilots. These devices measure several parameters simultaneously and determine the current AOA providing a visual image to the pilot of the current AOA along with representations of the proximity to the critical AOA. Figure 8, 31 These devices can give a visual representation of the energy management state of the airplane. The energy state of an airplane is the balance between airspeed, altitude, drag, and thrust and represents how efficiently the airfoil is operating. End of page 8 to 22. Compass Systems The Earth is a huge magnet, spinning in space, surrounded by a magnetic field made up of invisible lines of flux. These lines leave the surface at the magnetic North Pole and re-enter at the magnetic South Pole. Lines of magnetic flux have two important characteristics. Any magnet that is free to rotate will align with them, and an electrical current is induced into any conductor that cuts across them. Most direction indicators installed in aircraft make use of one of these two characteristics. Magnetic Compass One of the oldest and simplest instruments for indicating direction is the magnetic compass. It is also one of the basic instruments required by Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Part 91 for both VFR and IFR flight. A magnet is a piece of material, usually a metal containing iron, that attracts and holds lines of magnetic flux. Regardless of size, every magnet has two poles, north and south. When one magnet is placed in the field of another, the unlike poles attract each other, and like poles repel. An aircraft magnetic compass, such as the one in figure 8, 32, has two small magnets attached to a metal float sealed inside a bowl of clear compass fluid similar to kerosene. A graduated scale, called a card, is wrapped around the float and view through a glass window with a lubber line across it. The card is marked with letters representing the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, and a number for each 30 degrees between these letters. The final zero is omitted from these directions. For example, 3 equals 30 degrees, 6 equals 60 degrees, and 33 equals 330 degrees. There are long and short graduation marks between the letters and numbers, each long mark representing 10 degrees and each short mark representing 5 degrees. The float and card assembly has a hardened steel pivot in its center that rides inside a special, spring-loaded, hard glass jewel cup. The buoyancy of the float takes most of the weight off of the pivot, and the fluid damps the oscillation of the float and card. This jewel and pivot type mounting allows the float freedom to rotate and tilt up to approximately 18 degrees angle of bank. At steeper bank angles, the compass indications are erratic and unpredictable. The compass housing is entirely full of compass fluid. To prevent damage or leakage when the fluid expands and contracts with temperature changes, the rear of the compass case is sealed with a flexible diaphragm, or with a metal bellows in some compasses. The magnets align with the Earth's magnetic field and the pilot reads the direction on the scale opposite the lubber line. Note that in figure 8, 32, the pilot views the compass card from its backside. End of page 8 to 23. When the pilot is flying north, as the compass indicates, east is to the pilot's right. On the card, 33, which represents 330 degrees, west of north, is to the right of north. 
The reason for this apparent backward graduation is that the card remains stationary, and the compass housing and the pilot rotate around it. Because of this setup, the magnetic compass can be confusing to read. Magnetic compass induced errors. The magnetic compass is the simplest instrument in the panel, but it is subject to a number of errors that must be considered. Variation. The Earth rotates about its geographic axis, maps and charts are drawn using meridians of longitude that pass through the geographic poles. Directions measured from the geographic poles are called true directions. The magnetic north pole to which the magnetic compass points is not collocated with the geographic north pole, but is some 1,300 miles away. Directions measured from the magnetic poles are called magnetic directions. In aerial navigation, the difference between true and magnetic directions is called variation. The same angular difference in surveying and land navigation is called declination. Figure 8, 33 Shows the isogonic lines that identify the number of degrees of variation in their area. The line that passes near Chicago is called the agonic line. Anywhere along this line the two poles are aligned, and there is no variation. East of this line, the magnetic north pole is to the west of the geographic north pole and a correction must be applied to a compass indication to get a true direction. Flying in the Washington, D.C. area, for example, the variation is 10 degrees west. If a pilot wants to fly a true course of south, 180 degrees, the variation must be added to this, resulting in a magnetic course of 190 degrees to fly. Flying in the Los Angeles, California area, the variation is 14 degrees east. To fly a true course of 180 degrees there, the pilot would have to subtract the variation and fly a magnetic course of 166 degrees. The variation error does not change with the heading of the aircraft, it is the same anywhere along the isogonic line. Deviation The magnets in a compass align with any magnetic field. Some causes for magnetic fields in aircraft include flowing electrical current, magnetized parts, and conflict with the Earth's magnetic field. These aircraft magnetic fields create a compass error called deviation. Deviation, unlike variation, depends on the aircraft heading. Also unlike variation, the aircraft's geographic location does not affect deviation. While no one can reduce or change variation error, an aviation maintenance technician, AMT, can provide the means to minimize deviation error by performing the maintenance task known as swinging the compass. End of page 8 to 24. To swing the compass, an AMT positions the aircraft on a series of known headings, usually at a compass rose. Figure 8, 34, a compass rose consists of a series of lines marked every 30 degrees on an airport ramp, oriented to magnetic north. There is minimal magnetic interference at the compass rose. The pilot or the AMT, if authorized, can taxi the aircraft to the compass rose and maneuver the aircraft to the headings prescribed by the AMT. As the aircraft is swung or aligned to each compass rose heading, the AMT adjusts the compensator assembly located on the top or bottom of the compass. The compensator assembly has two shafts whose ends have screwdriver slots accessible from the front of the compass. Each shaft rotates one or two small compensating magnets. The end of one shaft is marked EW, and its magnets affect the compass when the aircraft is pointed east or west. The other shaft is marked NS and its magnets affect the compass when the aircraft is pointed north or south. The adjustments position the compensating magnets to minimize the difference between the compass indication and the actual aircraft magnetic heading. The AMT records any remaining error on a compass correction card like the one in figure 8, 35 and places it in a holder near the compass. Only AMTs can adjust the compass or complete the compass correction card. Pilots determine and fly compass headings using the deviation errors noted on the card. Pilots must also note the use of any equipment causing operational magnetic interference such as radios, de-icing equipment, pitot heat, radar, or magnetic cargo. The corrections for variation and deviation must be applied in the correct sequence as shown below, starting from the true course desired. Step 1. Determine the magnetic course true course, 180 degrees, plus or minus variation, plus 10 degrees, equals magnetic course, 190 degrees. The magnetic course, 190 degrees, is steered if there is no deviation error to be applied. 
The compass card must now be considered for the compass course of 190 degrees. Step 2. Determine the compass course magnetic course, 190 degrees, from step 1, plus or minus deviation, minus 2 degrees, from correction card, equals compass course, 188 degrees. Note, intermediate magnetic courses between those listed on the compass card need to be interpreted. Therefore, to steer a true course of 180 degrees, the pilot would follow a compass course of 188 degrees. To find the true course that is being flown when the compass course is known. Compass course plus or minus deviation equals magnetic course plus or minus variation equals true course. Dip errors. The Earth's magnetic field runs parallel to its surface only at the magnetic equator, which is the point halfway between the magnetic north and south poles. As you move away from the magnetic equator towards the magnetic poles, the angle created by the vertical pull of the Earth's magnetic field in relation to the Earth's surface increases gradually. This angle is known as the dip angle. The dip angle increases in a downward direction as you move towards the magnetic north pole and increases in an upward direction as you move towards the magnetic south pole. If the compass needle were mounted so that it could pivot freely in three dimensions, it would align itself with the magnetic field, pointing up or down at the dip angle in the direction of local magnetic north. Because the dip angle is of no navigational interest, the compass is made so that it can rotate only in the horizontal plane. End of page 8 to 25. This is done by lowering the center of gravity below the pivot point and making the assembly heavy enough that the vertical component of the magnetic force is too weak to tilt it significantly out of the horizontal plane. The compass can then work effectively at all latitudes without specific compensation for dip. However, close to the magnetic poles, the horizontal component of the Earth's field is too small to align the compass which makes the compass unusable for navigation. Because of this constraint, the compass only indicates correctly if the card is horizontal. Once tilted out of the horizontal plane, it will be affected by the vertical component of the Earth's field which leads to the following discussions on northerly and southerly turning errors. Northerly turning errors The center of gravity of the float assembly is located lower than the pivotal point. As the aircraft turns, the force that results from the magnetic dip causes the float assembly to swing in the same direction that the float turns. The result is a false northerly turn indication. Because of this lead of the compass card, or float assembly, a northerly turn should be stopped prior to arrival at the desired heading. This compass error is amplified with the proximity to either magnetic pole. One rule of thumb to correct for this leading error is to stop the turn 15 degrees plus half of the latitude, i.e., if the aircraft is being operated in a position near 40 degrees latitude, the turn should be stopped 15 plus 20 is equal to 35 degrees prior to the desired heading. Figure 8, 36A Southerly Turning Errors When turning in a southerly direction, the forces are such that the compass float assembly lags rather than leads. The result is a false southerly turn indication. The compass card, or float assembly, should be allowed to pass the desired heading prior to stopping the turn. As with the northerly error, this error is amplified with the proximity to either magnetic pole. To correct this lagging error, the aircraft should be allowed to pass the desired heading prior to stopping the turn. The same rule of 15 degrees plus half of the latitude applies here, i.e., if the aircraft is being operated in a position near 30 degrees latitude, the turn should be stopped 15 plus 15 plus 30 degrees after passing the desired heading. Figure 8, 36B Acceleration Error The magnetic dip and the forces of inertia cause magnetic compass errors when accelerating and decelerating on easterly and westerly headings. Because of the pendulous type mounting, the aft end of the compass card is tilted upward when accelerating and downward when decelerating during changes of airspeed. When accelerating on either an easterly or westerly heading, the error appears as a turn indication toward north. When decelerating on either of these headings, the compass indicates a turn toward south. A mnemonic, or memory jogger, for the effective acceleration error is the word ANDS, acceleration north slash deceleration south, may help you to remember the acceleration error. Figure 8, 37. Acceleration causes an indication toward north, 
deceleration causes an indication toward self. End of page 8 to 26. Oscillation error. Oscillation is a combination of all of the errors previously mentioned and results in fluctuation of the compass card in relation to the actual heading direction of the aircraft. When setting the gyroscopic heading indicator to agree with the magnetic compass, use the average indication between the swings. The vertical card magnetic compass. The vertical card magnetic compass eliminates some of the errors and confusion encountered with the magnetic compass. The dial of this compass is graduated with letters representing the cardinal directions, numbers every 30 degrees, and tick marks every 5 degrees. The dial is rotated by a set of gears from the shaft-mounted magnet, and the nose of the symbolic aircraft on the instrument glass represents the lubber line for reading the heading of the aircraft from the dial. Figure 8, 38, Lags or Leads When starting a turn from a northerly heading, the compass lags behind the turn. When starting a turn from a southerly heading, the compass leads the turn. Eddy current damping. In the case of a vertical card magnetic compass, flux from the oscillating permanent magnet produces eddy currents in a damping disc or cup. The magnetic flux produced by the eddy currents opposes the flux from the permanent magnet and decreases the oscillations. End of page 8 to 27. Outside air temperature, O80, gauge. The outside air temperature, O80, gauge is a simple and effective device mounted so that the sensing element is exposed to the outside air. The sensing element consists of a bimetallic type thermometer in which two dissimilar materials are welded together in a single strip and twisted into a helix. One end is anchored into protective tube and the other end is affixed to the pointer which reads against the calibration on a circular face. O80 gauges are calibrated in degrees degrees C, degree F, or both. An accurate air temperature provides the pilot with useful information about temperature lapse rate with altitude change. Figure 8, 39 Chapter Summary Flight instruments enable an aircraft to be operated with maximum performance and enhanced safety, especially when flying long distances, Manufacturers provide the necessary flight instruments, but to use them effectively, pilots need to understand how they operate. As a pilot, it is important to become very familiar with the operational aspects of the pitot-static system and associated instruments, the vacuum system and associated instruments, the gyroscopic instruments, and the magnetic compass. End of page 8 to 28. End of chapter 8. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Chapter 9 is coming soon.